All right, let's take a look at problem F, which was late Larry. This problem ended up being a little bit more difficult than expected. It has a bunch of time manipulation that you have to do, which is always a little bit difficult. Um, but this one turned out to be even more difficult because of a couple of edge cases here. Okay, so the general gist of the problem is that Larry is always late. Um, and basically, he needs to write a program that will tell him when he has to leave to arrive at his meeting on time. And he always knows how many minutes it will take to get to the meeting, but he doesn't know when to leave. So that's what this program has to calculate. And the first line is going to contain the scheduled time of the meeting. So that would be in the sample input, this number here. And again, like I have said in a few of the other videos, if you've watched them, look at the sample input as you're looking at the input and output sections. That's a really good technique to use to kind of understand what's going on. And you can kind of see from the sample input, it's going to be 12 hour format with AM and PM. So the meeting time is in this format, hour, minute, D, and then where H is the hour, where and that can be 1 to 12, and M is the number of minutes, so 0 to 60, or to 59, less than 60, and then M is also then here um, an integer that is always given in two digits, so there's no example here, but, but that means that it would be, if it was 403, it would be 403 instead of 4 colon 3. And H is also an integer, but is not left padded with zeros, and we can kind of see that. This 4 is not 04, it's just 4. And then D is AM or PM, so that makes sense. Okay, so the second line contains the time it takes Larry to arrive at the meeting. So this is the travel time to get to the meeting on time. And basically it's saying that it can be anywhere from 1 minute to a total of 24 times 60 minutes, which is a full 24-hour day. So you could have to leave at exactly the same time the day before. And then the output is the time Larry will need to leave in order to make the appointment for meeting on time. And the output format should be the same as the input format. So the exact same AM, PM. That's where a lot of the nuance of this problem comes in is dealing with this formatting. Okay, so this is a time-based problem, and generally the trick with these problems is to convert to whatever the lowest granularity value is, and in this case the lowest granularity value is minutes. Um, we don't care about anything past the minute, and therefore we will want to convert all of the hours into minutes. Now one thing that you have to consider is what do you want the base to be, and by base I mean what do you want to be the zeroth minute. In our case, it makes sense that we make midnight the zeroth minute. That I think will just kind of simplify things pretty easily here. But you can technically call 3 a.m. your base zero minute and then just do all of your time math according to that. However, I probably wouldn't recommend that. That sounds kind of difficult. Okay, so let's start by reading in this input. And we notice there are two lines. The first one is the time, and then we have an integer, which is the number of minutes that Larry has to travel. Okay, let's dive into some code. The first thing that we're gonna do is read in the input, and we'll start by just reading in the first line as a string, and then the second line as an integer. Now we have to convert our time into a number. So it's a string right now, we have to convert that into a number which represents the number of minutes past midnight. So the first thing that we're going to do is look back at our input and we note that there's a time and then there's an AM and PM. So the first thing that we're going to do is split up the string into two parts, the time and the AM PM, and we'll do that using the string split method. Almost every single language has a string split feature. So this is a very useful tool in programming competitions because there's a lot of times where you'll need to split strings by spaces or by commas or by, in our case, we're gonna have to eventually split it by a colon as well. So now we're gonna have time and ampm is equal to timester.split. 
by default, Python split function uses spaces to split the string. At this point, let's just print out the time and AMPM just to make sure that we've read it in correctly. Now, let's split our time by that colon. So we have hours and minutes is time dot split, and this time we're going to use the colon string instead of the default space to split our string. So let's print out hours, minutes, and AMPM just to make sure that we've done this part correctly. And we'll run our program and use our sample input. And we have 4.30 p.m. as space separated values, which is what we expect from our print statement. Now, we also have to convert our hours and minutes to integers. So we'll do that here. Now, there are more Pythonic ways of doing this, but I'm trying to make this a little bit more general so you can do this in another language as well. Okay, so we've broken it down to the base components that we need to determine how many minutes past midnight we are. Now, there's a few things that are kind of annoying here. First of all, we have to deal with AM and PM. In general, anything in the PM, we can automatically just add 12 hours, which is 12 times 60 minutes, to whatever the result is. So for example, if we have 1 o'clock AM, this will equal 60 minutes, whereas 1 o'clock PM is going to equal 12 times 60 plus another 60. So that's our first annoyance. We're going to have to deal with AM and PM. And the way that we're going to do that is just by adding this scaling factor of 12 times 60. Now the second thing that we have to deal with is the fact that 12 o'clock is a bit strange. 12 o'clock really should be 0 o'clock, but it's not. So anytime that we have a 12 something, we have to get rid of the hour and turn it into a 0. So for example, if we have 12 o'clock a.m., this is 0. This is midnight. We basically have to get rid of this 12. We have to turn the 12 into a 0. And if we have, for example, 12.30, this is going to be 30 because it's 30 minutes past midnight. Additionally, if we have 12 p.m., this is going to be 12 times 60 because we already are doing the, that addition for p.m., but then plus 0 because this is just 12 o'clock noon, which is 12 hours after midnight. And likewise, if you have 12.30 p.m., this is going to be 12 times 60 plus 30. For all other cases, the conversion is relatively simple. We basically take the number of hours and we multiply it by 60. So in our case with 1 a.m., we just took the number of hours, multiplied it by 60, and then added the number of minutes. In this case, it was 0, so we didn't have to add anything. But let me just show that right here. In this case, we did the same thing. We have 60, which is this hours, and then we have a 0 here with the added PM factor, which is this 12 times 60. So let's first write the code to deal with hours and minutes, then we'll write the code for AM, PM, and then we'll write the code to deal with 12 o'clock. So total minutes is just going to be the number of minutes plus the number of hours times 60. So this should handle all AM values except for anything starting with 12. So let's handle PM values. And we'll do that with an if statement. If am pm equals pm, then what we're going to do is we're going to just add this factor up here, this 12 times 60. So we've handled am pm and normal times, except for 12 o'clock. And what we need to do is we need to add a if statement for 12 o'clock. If it's 12, we're just going to zero out the hours. So let's go ahead and test this, and we'll print out total minutes. Now when we run it and use our sample input, we get 990. Now let's see if this makes sense. And I'll open up just an interactive Python to do our math. So this is 4 p.m., so we automatically have 12 times 60, 
which is the number of minutes until from midnight until noon. Then we have 4 times 60 for the number of hours past noon, and then we have an extra 30, and we get 990. So that looks correct. Let's try 12 o'clock a.m. And we get zero. It's zero minutes past midnight, so that is correct. And we'll try noon, because that's the other 12 o'clock case that's annoying. And we get 720, which is 12 times 60. Let's try one more. We'll do 12, 12.30 a.m. This should be 30, which it is. Excellent. So at this point, we've determined the total number of minutes past midnight that the meeting is starting at. Now, let's go back to our problem description and figure out what we have to do. We note that the second line is how long it takes for Larry to arrive at the meeting. So we have to leave that amount of time before the meeting actually starts to get there on time. And that makes sense. 4.30 goes back to 3.38 when you subtract 52 minutes. So let's go ahead and do this subtraction. We'll take total minutes and subtract the travel time. And this will be our leave time. Now, this could go negative. For example, if total minutes is 1, let's just say that it was 12.01 a.m. That would be a terrible meeting time, but let's just say it was 1, and we had to travel for 3 minutes to get there. This will be negative 2. So we can't really leave at negative 2 o'clock. That's just not a thing. What we should leave at is 11.58 p.m. Now, how are we going to do this? We basically need to wrap around our clock. The way that we're going to do this is using a modulus operator. Now, what does that mean? The modulus operator returns the remainder of an integer division. So if you remember back to elementary school where you had long division, sometimes you would have a remainder. So for example, if you had two divided by three, you would get one with a remainder of one. And normally what you would do is that is just put the one above the denominator. So you'd get one and one half. But in this case, we actually care only about the remainder. And the reason we only care about the remainder is that it has some special properties. The most important property is that it will always be between zero and your denominator minus one. Because if it is equal to your denominator, then it will just roll back into the long division and not be part of the remainder. So it's bounded by whatever the denominator is. So let's see what this looks like visually. Let's imagine that we have a circle of circumference of two. And we want to go around this three units. So one unit, two units, and then we have to go around it again a third unit. So what we end up with is this is our stop. And if we label this 0, 1, and then this is also 2, what we end up with is that our remainder is this 1. Our remainder always tells us how far around extra, in this case it was this far around extra, that we had to go. Now one cool thing about this is that it works the other direction as well. So let's just say that we have a circle and we end up for some reason with a negative remainder. Now, a negative remainder doesn't really make sense in classical division, but it does make sense in modular arithmetic. And I'm not gonna go into all the details of the modulus operator or modular arithmetic because that's what going to a discrete math course is for, but what you do need to know for this problem is that if you have a negative remainder, it works on this circle. It just goes the opposite direction. So if you have a negative one remainder, it'll just go in this opposite direction here, where now all of a sudden we started here and we get over here. So we start here and now we get over to here. And if we label these, then we see that the remainder, if we have a negative one, one remainder, it's the same as a positive one remainder. 
And there are some interesting properties with this. Like I mentioned, this is an entire course, basically. So we won't go into it in depth. However, one thing that we should note is that even though our remainder was negative, our result of the modulo is positive. And that's going to be really useful for us when we subtract. So let's imagine that we have another circle. This one represents all of time. So this is starts at 12 a.m. Let's just say that for some reason we have a negative time. So let's just say it's a negative by this much. Well, using the modulus operator, we can determine what line this is. We can determine what positive time, how far we would have to go around the circle, the opposite direction. And that's what our modulo operator will give us. So now we all of a sudden have a positive number and we can just convert that positive number back to some representation. So let's just say that this is 11 o'clock p.m. And it will just give us that, even though our number would have been negative 60. Now, this actually solves our wraparound problem in the positive direction, for example, if we have something greater than 12 p.m. But that won't actually happen ever because we only subtract time. We never add time. Now, in Python, the percent operator is the modulus operator. And in most languages, percent is the modulus operator. Now, one thing that you will have to be aware of is that some languages give you a negative number if the remainder is negative. So in Python, what modulo will give you is a number between zero and the denominator, where the zero is inclusive and the denominator is exclusive. But in some languages, what you'll end up with is actually a number between negative D and D both of these being exclusive. If your language does this, the way to convert it to this is to, if it's negative, then add D. I believe that Java does this, so be aware of that if you're doing this in Java. So now let's go back over to the code and implement this. Our modulus is going to be in terms of minutes, and it's going to be equal to 24 times 60. So that's our modulus denominator. And then we will set leave time equal to leave time modulus that value. This will do all of the wraparound for us and make our time positive. Now we need to convert leave time to hours, minutes, a.m. and p.m. So we'll start by just doing hours and minutes. Hours is just going to be the integer division of leave time and divided by 60. So this will give us an integer value rather than a floating point value, leaving off any of the decimals. So if you have 60 minutes, it'll just go to one hour. If you have 61 minutes, it'll also go to one hour. Now minutes, we're also going to use the modulus operator. And this time we're going to use it with 60 as our constant. Now, what does this mean? Basically, it means that we're wrapping around our hour clock, not our 24 hour clock, but just a single hour. And we're trying to figure out how many extra minutes we're going around that hour clock. So that's why we're going to use the modulus operator here. So we've dealt with hours and minutes. Let's deal with AM and PM next. By default, let's just assume that it's AM. And the condition for it being PM is that the number of hours is greater than or equal to 12. So that would be anything after noon and then into the evening and night. So if the hours is greater than or equal to 12, then AM PM is going to equal PM. Now, one thing that we have to do if it's PM, then it means that it's greater than or equal to 12. And we don't want that. We want it to be, for example, if it's 1 PM, we don't want it to be 13, we want that to be 1. So we have to subtract off 12 from our hours. So at this point, we've handled hours, minutes, AM, and PM. And just like before, just like the input, we have to deal with 12 o'clock now. And the way that we're going to do that is just by looking at the hours. If it's 0, then it should be converted back to 12. If you remember up here, that's the opposite of what we're doing. 
So we did setting it to zero if it is 12. Now, if it is zero, we want to set it to 12. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead, before we try and format our answer correctly, let's just go ahead and print out our values to make sure that we haven't done anything incorrectly. And we'll test it. Let's say that we have exactly 12.01 a.m. and we subtract three minutes. What this should give us is 11.58 p.m. and that's exactly what we get, 11.58 p.m. Obviously we need to still format it correctly. And let's just try one that will result in 12 o'clock. So we'll do 1.01 a.m. and we'll subtract three minutes. This should be 12.58 a.m., which it is. Now, let's go back to the output format and look at how we're supposed to output this. If you notice, H is the hour of the day, and that is not zero padded. However, M is going to be left padded with zeros. It'll always be given as two digits. So we need to handle that. Some languages have useful string formatting utilities. I'm going to not use any of those for this because I want this to be as general as possible. So let's go back to the code. And the only time that it will be a single digit is if m, the number of minutes, is less than 10. So a single digit, obviously. So if m is less than 10, then all we're just going to do is we're going to set m equal to the string 0 plus m. And we should convert that to a string. Now we have to output hours and minutes with a colon between them. So we'll change this to stir hours plus the colon operator, plus our stir of minutes. And the AM PM stays the same. Let's test it out on the sample inputs. This should be 3.38 PM, which it is. And this should be 10.54 AM, which it is. Let's try one more just to be sure that we are confident in our solution. Let's do 12.01.02 a.m. and we'll do 4 and this should be 11.58 p.m. the previous day. So this looks really good. Let's go ahead and check and see if it works. Cool, it's accepted. I want to recap this with three things. First of all, always convert to whatever granularity you care about. So in our case, we cared about minutes, so we converted to minutes. And secondly, always try and break down the problem into parts. So we had two parts, parsing the input and then outputting it correctly, and we did those in two different parts of our program. Additionally, each one of those had their own challenges. So we started with doing hours and minutes, then we did AM, PM, then we dealt with 12 o'clock. Same up here. We did, we dealt with hours and minutes, dealt with 12 o'clock, and then dealt with AM and PM. Third thing to remember is this modulo operator. The most important thing to remember about the modulo operator is that it gives you a number between zero and your modular denominator.